कृष्ण हर हरि हर राम हर राम 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 हर हरि हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण Hare Krishna, I am Rajar Shidas. Welcome to Hare Krishna today. On today's program, we're going to speak about the Srimad Bhagavatam lecture. What's that? Well, every day, all over the world at Hare Krishna temples, there is a special part of the morning spiritual discipline is called the Bhagavatam lecture. And it consists of reading from the great book Srimad Bhagavatam. Now this Bhagavatam is described as the light for people in this age of Kali Yuga. 5,000 years ago the question was asked, now that Lord Krishna has departed for his own abode, how would people attain perfection? So the response Krishna Swadham Upagati Dharma Gyana Dhibi Saha Kalo Nashta Drishamesha Puranarko Adhuno Ditaha. That this Bhagavat is as brilliant as the sun, and people who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of Kali, they shall get light from this Puran. So, Every morning, a verse would be read from the Bhagavat. Srila Prabhupada has given his translation and purport, explanation. So it is said, Nigama kalpataro galitam palam shukamukaram rita dravasam yutam pibata bhagavatam rasamalayam mohuraho rasika bhovi bhavukaha. O oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the ripened fruit of the tree of Vedic literatures. So, the Vedic scriptures, they compared to a tree, and uh, just like a tree has many parts, the roots and the trunk and the branches, leaves, twigs, and so on, but the real thing, is the ripened fruit of that tree. If you have a mango tree, then the ripened fruit, the mango fruit, that is the real thing. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is described as the ripened fruit of the tree of the Vedic literatures. So this Bhagavat <clears throat> begins, we offer a prayer to the Lord, Om Namom, Bhagavate Vasudevaya, and this is repeated three times. Then there is a prayer from the Bhagavata itself that says, Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chayva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udire. That before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, we offer respectful obeisances onto the personality of God at Narayan, onto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and onto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. So, we would have a little sample of reading of the Bhagavat. Of course, the first verse that we are going to read, Srila Prabhupada's purport is very elaborate. We do recommend that you get Srimad Bhagavatam because it is the essence of all scriptures of the world. So I'm going to read the verse, translation, and discuss some of the points mentioned here. The verse goes as follows. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janma dyasya yata nvayarita ratashcharteshu abhigya swarat 
Tene Brahma Hridaya Dikavai Muhyanti Atsurayah Tejo Vare Mridam Yatha Vinimayo Yatra Trisaragang Rishaha Dhamna Svena Sada Nirashta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dhimahi Translation O my Lord Shri Krishna, Son of Asudeva, all pervading Supreme Personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because He is the Absolute Truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge onto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Now there are so many important points mentioned in this one verse. In fact, it said that Srila Prabhupada's Guru Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he lectured on this one verse for six months. Yes, this verse is so profound. But first, let me explain the context in which this verse appears or the context in which this Bhagavatam appears. As we know, there are many Vedic literatures, and the Vedas were put into writing by Srila Vyasadeva, who is an incarnation of the Lord. In the Gita, in the 15th chapter, Krishna says, Vedais cha sarvair ahameva vedyaha vedanta krit vedavid eva chaham. He says that by all the Vedas, I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of the Vedanta, and I am also the knower of the Vedas. So Krishna, in his incarnation as Vyasadeva, put these scriptures into writing. But very often people are confused by so many different Vedic literatures, for example, there are the Vedas, four Vedas. But then, there are many other scriptures, not just four Vedas. 108 Upanishads, 18 major Puranas, Itihasas, so many different histories. So sometimes people become confused by apparent contradictions. Someone may read this Puran and say, this person is the Supreme. Another person read another Puran and say, this person is the Supreme. This Devi Bhagavata is saying Devi is Supreme. This Shiv Puran is saying Shiva is the Supreme. And this one is saying this is Supreme. So people become all confused. But whom should we accept than the author himself? So what is the position? Of this Bhagavat. It says Sarva Vedanta Saramhi Sri Bhagavatam Ishati. Sarva Vedanta Sar 
means it is the cream of all Vedanta philosophy. So what this means is that the Vedas is variegated. In fact, to get an explanation from the Gita from Lord Krishna himself, he tells Arjuna, Trigunya Vishaya Veda Nish Trigunya Bhava Arjun. My dear Arjun, the Vedas deal mainly with the subject matter of the three modes of material nature. Souls in this world, they are trapped in the three modes of material nature and they have some desire to fulfill within the modes of material nature. So the Vedas contains all different types of religiosity. Now the Vedas principles, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. So you perform some religiosity, Dharma, to get Artha, to get some economic development. Do this and you'll get that, do this and you'll get that. So Dharma, to get Artha, then you get calm, sense gratification. And then, ultimately, there should be freedom from this existence, moksha. So these are the subject matters. But then Krishna says that there are less intelligent people who get tied up in the Vedas. Krishna says, Yamimam Pushpitam Vacham Pravadanti avipaschitaha veda vadarata parta na anyar ashtiti varina. He said that there are less intelligent people and they are attracted by the pushpitam vacham, the flowery words of the Vedas. Flowery words meaning the Vedas are saying, do this and you'll get that. Do this and you'll get that. Promising all these things. Why? The majority of souls within this world, that's their business, that's their interest. They use religion to get their sense gratification. I want this, I want that, I want the other. But the Vedas is meant to get people out of this animalistic life, just identifying with the body and just going for it, just endeavoring for sense gratification. The Vedas want to get people out of this animalistic life. So on the lowest level, human beings, their business, ahara, nidra, bhaya, maitun, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. This is their business. And this is compared to animal life because the Vedas says, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, samanyam etat, pashubhi naranam. This is common to the animals and the human beings. The one thing that distinguishes the human beings from the animals, dharmo hiteisham, adhiko vishesh. The one thing that makes us different from the animals is this element, this thing called dharma. Dharma in essence really means to know God and to love God. But on the lower level, dharma is meant to get us on the track. That there is someone in control who is supplying all the necessities. And look, if you want to enjoy, you want to enjoy yourself, you should find out who is in control, who is in charge of these things, and you should learn to offer sacrifice. But ultimately, sacrifice means Yagyo Vai Vishnu. Ultimately, sacrifice means who is the maintainer and what is my obligation how to offer. That's ultimately the purpose of all sacrifice. So Krishna says in the Gita that ahamhi sarva yajnanam bhokta cha prabhu reva cha natu mang abhijanati tatve natas chyavantiti that aham hi sarva yajnanam that I am the only enjoyer of all sacrifices and anyone who doesn't understand that Chiavantite, he falls back down. In fact, there is a peace formula that Krishna describes in the Gita. That is the final verse of the fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna says, Bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maishwaram surida sarva bhutanam gyatva mam shantim richati. 
Gyatva mam shanti marichati. If you want shanti, then you have to know me as Bhoktaram. I am the only enjoyer of all yagya and all tapasya that you may perform. You have to know that whatever you do, I am the real beneficiary. It has to be offered for my benefit. Then Krishna says, you should also know that Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, all abodes, all planets, Krishna is the Lord and Master, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. He is the Lord of all planets. So he says, furthermore, you have to understand, Surida Sarva Bhutanam, that I am the dearmost friend of all living beings because in this world on the illusion everybody is thinking this person is my friend this person is my friend this one will really help me out so in illusion lifetime after lifetime we are disappointed because we don't understand who is our real friend so krishna is saying gyatva man when you know me as all these things Shantim Richati, then only you will get peace. Not otherwise. You could go on chanting Om Shanti Om, but you will not be able to bring about peace until and unless you understand the peace formula. So back to the point about the Bhagwat. There are many Vedic scriptures written by Vyas, but Bhagwat is his conclusion. After the Vedas, he starts in the Upanishad pointing, or get, he, he tells Arjuna, the Vedas deal mainly with religiosity in the three modes, but Nishtrai Gunya Bhava Arjuna, you rise above the three Gunas, get free from this duality of gain and safety. Get free from this. So then, after Krishna describes this to Arjuna, then Krishna says, Brahmanasya Vijanata, one who knows Vedanta, the conclusion of the Vedas, he is actually learned. Because all the different Vedas like different wells. You have some well, you get a little water for this purpose, that purpose. But if you have a great reservoir, it can take care of all your needs. So when you understand the conclusion of the Vedas, then real perfection can be obtained. So Vedanta Sutra, after the Upanishads, there is Vedanta Sutra. Now the Absolute is described, but in code. Sutra means code. For example, Vedanta begin by saying, Athato Brahma Jigyasa. First aphorism. Because all the time you're caught up in matter. But now, Uto, wake up. And Brahma Jigyasa. Inquire into Brahman, inquire into your identity. Who am I? What am I? Am I physical body that I see in the mirror? No, I am. Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi. So when we now wake up and we inquire into our existence, Brahman, that's not all. We should know what is our source, where we come from. We are not the source of everything in existence. So, Brahman, fine, we are spirit. But there is Para Brahman, the Supreme Brahman. So therefore, Vedanta, the second aphorism says that Janmadi Asetaha, that the absolute truth is that from which everything comes. Fine, we exist. Matter exists around. But who is the source of everything that exists? So Vedanta is describing the effect and the cause, the source 
and everything that comes from the source. Janmadi asetaha. That from which everything comes, but that's just a code. What is that? So Bhagwat is the natural commentary on Vedanta by the author himself, Srila Vyasadeva. So, Bhagwat is explaining the point explicitly that Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadi Asetaha. That that Vasudev, he is Janmadi Asetaha. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances unto Sri Krishna, the son of Vasudev. He is the all-pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Bhagavat is confirming Krishna's position as the source of everything. But in Gita, Krishna confirms that about himself in the ninth chapter, the most confidential knowledge also. So then, it further describes Krishna's position. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. So Abhigya, he knows everything in existence. Krishna confirms that in Gita. He says in Gita, Vedaham samatitani vartmanani charjana bhavishyani chabhutani mam tu veda nakas chana as the Supreme Lord. I know everything, past, present, future, and I know all beings. That's Krishna's qualification. So here it is said he is Abhigya, but he is Swarat. Swarat means he is fully independent. He doesn't come from anyone or anything. Rather, he is the source of everything. He describes himself in Bhagavad Gita, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo. I am the source of everything material and spiritual. Everything emanates from me. And Buddha Bhava Samanvita, the wise who knows this perfectly, engages in my devotional service and they worship me with all their heart. The wise. Those who don't know Krishna as the source of everything, they are not wise. They are otherwise. Krishna described them elsewhere. Namandu skritino mudha prapadyante naradhama maya pahrita gyan asurbhav. They can choose their category, people who don't know. But those who are those who are knowers of the truth. Bahunam janmanam anti. After bahu janam, when they become gyanavan, full of knowledge, then Krishna says. They know me, Vasudeva Sarvamiti. They know me, Vasudeva, to be everything, Samahatma Sudurlabha. So here it is said, Datine Brahma Hridaya Adi Kavai Muhyanti at Surayaha. That he is the one who imparted knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji in the beginning of the creation. Brahmaji is the first created being in this world. And sometimes people become totally confused. They hear about Brahma is the creator and Vishnu is the maintainer and Shiva is the destroyer. So they falsely conclude that Brahma is the supreme creator, the ultimate creator. But if you think so, well you should think again. Brahma is the secondary creator. Mahavishnu is the source of all the universes. All the universes come. He is the fourth expansion from Krishna. So from Mahavishnu's body, all the universes emanate 
and then he expands himself as Garboda Kishai Vishnu lies down at the bottom of each universe. Then a lotus stem sprout out from his navel. Brahma is born at the top. And then he further expands himself as Kshiroda Kashai Vishnu and enters within every atom and within the heart of all living beings, Antaryami or Paramatma, and that's the Vishnu we know as the maintainer. So when we speak about Brahma as the creator, that's within the material world. But from Mahavishnu, all the universes emanate, and he's just an expansion of Krishna. So, Muhyanti Surayaha, all the great sages and the devatas, they are bewildered by Krishna. Even Brahma, Brahma V. Mohanalila in Bhagavad. Indra bewildered, he is the king of heaven. So, Krishna is Param Satyam Dhimahi. I meditate on him because he is the Param Satyam the absolute truth. So there may be sat, there is truth, but Krishna is the Param Satyam, the absolute truth. And understanding Bhagavat means to understand the absolute truth in detail. Otherwise it remains vague, it remains ambiguous. So we'd like to conclude here and we'll continue this topic in our pre continuing programs. I am Rajarshi Das saying Hare Krishna and do join us again next week for another presentation. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.